Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yes, we thank God again for his grace and mercy. Without him, we could be not here. We thank God for everything. Before we begin the program, as usual, I would like to read some prayer requests, and then I will call Pastor Christian to pray for these few prayer requests. One of them is one of our friends says, pray for me because my wife beats me when I tell her that I want to go to church. Why are you murmuring? The other one says, I'm under, uh, he is undergoing divorce and it's taking a toil on him and want to God want God to be with him. The other one is struggling with the addiction and it just turned uh, apart his family. Uh, the other one says, my fiancé is being forced to marry an American man against her will. And the man is not, in quote, a Christian. He's taking a toil not uh, on her. His prayer is that the Lord may help her. Um, she can't live alone since her husband left and married another woman. And she does not want to marry another woman when her ex-husband is still alive and wants to know God's will before October. I think there are some typing errors, but we have got the concept. Pastor Christian... You can come and pray for our friends who are going through these tough times. May we stand and have a silent prayer for them and then pastor will pray. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, holy, holy, holy is your name. Yet you invite us to come boldly before your presence. You welcome us to come to you with our needs, with our requests. And we do so, Lord, without fear, because you are love. And you welcome us to express our needs and petitions to you. And so, Father in heaven, tonight we've gathered here to hear your word. And we've also come to pray, to have communion with you. And so, Lord, we come to you with heavy hearts. Yes. We pray for our sister, who does not know what she is doing as she treats her husband in unloving ways. We pray, O oh God, that you would convict her heart of what she is doing and that her husband would remain faithful to you and desire to go to church. But I pray that you would soften her heart and your Holy Spirit would be at work in their marriage. And Lord, we pray for those that are suffering through the pain of divorce. It is so painful, so difficult. We pray, Lord, that you would come. And first we would pray that you would bring a spirit of repentance and forgiveness. Oh, yes that their, their, their marital pain and issues would be resolved and healed, and that they would have the spirit of forgiveness towards one another. Please, Lord, intervene in a miraculous way. We pray, Lord, for those that are going through marital or premarital conflicts where there's questions about, about loyalty and love and commitment. Lord, our human, our humanity, can be complicated sometimes. But you are God and you understand each one of us. You know every heart, every family, every relationship, you know it all together. And so we pray, Lord, that you would please come and bring wisdom and understanding that men and women would be willing to do your will and put away sin and put away pride and renounce sin and be able, Lord, to surrender all to you. Please bring healing to hearts. 
And Lord, as we come this evening to learn more about you, we pray that you would give us understanding of how can, we can learn more about each other. Bless every spouse, every husband and wife who is here this evening. May you bring our hearts even closer together. And I pray that you would speak through Pastor David, Amen. that he would anoint his lips and Amen. speak wisdom yes. through him, yes. that we may apply the wisdom that we learned tonight mm. and give us courage and willingness to do so with gladness. Mm. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, you remember last presentation? Two things I said. Every good husband wants to satisfy his wife in almost every area but he doesn't know how. That's the need of every man. But at the same time, every good woman, every good woman, don't forget the statement, every good woman, not every woman, every good woman wants to satisfy her husband in almost every area, but she doesn't know how. So we, we need to understand how we can do this. Take time to learn from each other. Take time. Make sure that you take time to learn from each other. Remember I said, when, when a woman loves a husband, a woman wants to fix or to correct the man. But it's quite different. A man's sense of self is defined through his ability to achieve and to see results. We have so-called feminine and masculine hormones. When I am touch these things, I know Dr. Chidi and Mrs. Finn may touch more on this later when we talk about hormones and behavior. It's something which is very important. We, we have, all of us, we have feminine and masculine hormones, but it depends which one are dominant in your body. So nowadays, men, most all of them, they suffer from the problem called testosterone deficiency. When you reach the age of 40 above, 41, sometimes 38, it depends on the, your lifestyle. As we have been told here, lifestyle is very important. But commonly, if you are from 40 years above, or 38 years above as a man, the amount of testosterone is going down. And testosterone is a king hormone to us. There is a way you can, you can add exercise part of it, lifestyle like eating. If, if you take a lot of sugar, testosterone is going down. But also women need estrogen. This is very important. When women has enough estrogen, the behavior changes. So if you want your man to have more testosterone, one of the things you have to do is to appreciate him. Hallelujah. Because men are goal-oriented. When you see them discussing things, Men are discussing about cars, buildings. But women, because they are emotion-oriented, they talk about flowers, decorations. And even they can discuss about somebody who just wears certain clothes which is not good. Women can talk about that. When they are together somewhere and you are presenting here and you are a woman, not a man, a woman, they will just look at you and say, if she's sitting with a friend here, have a look. Instead of talking about the topic which is being presented, they'll talk about the dress. And you know, women can call each other sweetheart, dear, Are we together? 
they can call each other sweetheart, dear. But men. <laughs> if we spot you. <laughs> we will call you. In our special committee. We want to know. What do you mean? When a man is being criticized, he feels as if he has done nothing. So automatic cortisol hormone is rising up. And testosterone is going down. Woman needs two major hormones. They, they have others, but you have to keep in mind these two one. Estrogen and extorsin, these two of them. And, and a woman needs to be cherished. Hallelujah. So when your wife is out there going to church, just look her, at her and then say, wow, you look so beautiful. And then she will tell you, are you sure? Don't say, no, I was joking. <laughs> you look so beautiful. That's how they are. Take time to learn from each other. Men are more interested in objects, things, rather than people and feelings. Very rare. You will find us talking about people. Very rare. But women. The choir is singing here. Very beautiful song. But you will find women there. She is telling another woman. Do you see the second from left? I will tell you something about her after someone. <laughs> uh, for men, achieving goals is a very important thing. So if you want your man to be so active, in quote, if you get me, just wave on me. If you want your man to be active in court, even if something went wrong in court, just tell him, You are so good. I know. Today, you was a bit tired, but I know you are super. Don't criticize. Tomorrow, he will do nothing. When he buy a gift for you, even if you don't love it, don't say it. A man has been struggling, buying something, and then he's presenting to you. Then you just look at it and say, Did you saw other colors? He will never bring a gift again. But if you say, wow, this is so good. When I was teaching this somewhere, then a lady said to pastor, that is a lie. It's not good. <laughs> but it's not a lie. He's using wisdom. It's good because he brought it. Hallelujah. This is so good. Just wait after seven days, even a month, and then just tell him, I really appreciate you bought this phone. It's so good. I think next time, after this, I would like to have a purple color after this. 
But if you, you criticize him direct, that is not good. Find a good way of presenting a message to your spouse. Always. You know, when, when we're teaching these things here, we're just talking about general things, but you need to have enough time to, to start, to learn. Because this is general view. But you have to, to learn from your husband, your wife, and, and you have to know the way they respond. They don't respond the same. So you have to learn. The way you present and the way the recipient receives will determine the response. Yes. In Africa, I don't know, I, I think in America is, is yeah, quite different from this one. But in Africa, we have different tribes. And we act differently. Like back home in Tanzania, I don't know in Kenya will tell me about this, but back home in Tanzania, we, we have women from Lake Zone, Lake Victoria, like Mwanza, Tarime, those people. W when they greet a man, they kneel down a bit. You have this one in Kenya? <laughs> they, you don't have this one here. That's a way of showing respect. I know in Western culture, they will not understand this. But always a man needs to feel that he is a king. So it depends the way you show it. But in my tribe, women cannot do this. I am from Pari Mountains. When you do that, Pari people will think you are worshipping them. So they will tell you, no, 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 don't do that, I'm not God. But in Lake Zone, that is normal. So you have to understand the culture. Hallelujah. You have to understand the culture. There is something which is destroying a lot of marriages. This is called external committee members. These are destroying a lot of marriages. You are not your own. You depend on other people to give you advice. And when they give you advice, they give you advice according to the understanding of marriage. This is very dangerous. The type of people you invite for advice during marriage conflict will determine the kind of solution you are going to get. Others will tell you, get out. When you tell somebody, my wife is giving me her time, they will beat her. That's the advice. There is no way you can be controlled by a woman. You have to beat her. That's the advice. But the Bible says, don't do that. Hallelujah. You remember when I was reading this statement here that somebody says, pray for me because my wife is beating me. Almost the whole congregation was murmuring. Why? Because we don't expect a man to say this. But we have a lot of men who are going through this, but they don't say I'm telling you, this is a gentleman. You see many say, no, pastor, that is not right. But if a wife can beat you and you don't respond, that is the highest level of emotional intelligence. The highest level. As a Christian, we're in Africa. <laughs> With us here, anything can happen any time. <laughs> Unless you know Jesus Christ. But this is the highest level of emotional intelligence. Why? God gave you energy as a man to protect a woman and children. Not to beat them. Hallelujah. If you find a man who says, my wife is beating me, then we ask, eh, 
when he was beating you, what did you do? He will tell you, I just went back and pray. Other men will say, we will show you how we deal with these things. You remember this story, I think Pastor Ruguru knows better than me. It happens in Mombasa, I think. One woman was beating the husband always. And I think because of the appearance of a woman, because the woman was tough and big. But a man was very small more than me. So every time when he came home late, a woman could beat him severely. One day when he was with other men, they were discussing some things, and then the man says, I want to go home before the time. Then his fellow men asked him, why are you running? He said, if I go there late, my wife will beat me. They told him, this time, don't go on time, we will help you. We have a friend here who is so powerful than you. So don't worry. He will escort you. And when you get there, don't speak politely. Speak like a man. <laughs> then he said, my God, if I do that, that lady will kill me. He said, don't worry. You have somebody who will protect you. Then they waited until night. They went together. And then that little man said, open the door. I'm here. And the woman said, tonight, I will teach you a lesson. But the other one, the man who is so powerful, told him, don't worry. When she opens the door, I will get in. And I will make sure that you are behind me. So the wife opened the door and just switched off the light and she said, I don't want to see you when I'm beating you. But lo and behold, the one who got in is the powerful one. He did his job well. And the woman was down there tired. And when he got out, he told the other one, get in. When he got in, he just jumped on a chair and switched on the light. And then he told the woman, every time you have been beating me, I was not responding because I know the way I beat. <laughs> now you see. That was the permanent solution. <laughs> Don't do that at home. <laughs> The type of people you invite for advice during marriage conflicts will determine the kind of solution you are going to get. Every time when I'm talking about the solution, if you have been quoting me, I want you to go back to the Bible. Not the other people. The Bible has everything we need. Everything is there. Point out issues you can share, and which ones you cannot share. My sisters, listen to me. Because women are emotional. Unfortunately, when they trust their friends, they open up. And they can say everything. But, put this in mind. You say everything now. You don't know what comes tomorrow. The one you call a friend today is your enemy tomorrow. 
Don't use your emotion when you talk. Some of people are just waiting for you to open up. Never ever think that everyone is happy when they see you are in a good marriage. Not everyone is happy about that one. Some of people will celebrate when they see you, you are suffering. And by the way, very few people can keep secrets. The Bible says, don't tell anyone about this. Instead, go to the priest and let him examine you. Hallelujah. Do you know who is our priest? Jesus Christ. Take along the offering required in the law of Moses for those who have been healed of leprosy. This will be a public testimony that you have been cleansed. Make sure that you choose the right person to share your challenges with. Yes. I know some people who even committed suicide just because a friend has revealed her secrets. Don't trust people. Trust God. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Trust God. When you ask me, Pastor, can you advise me? Can I say everything? No. Let me tell you, when it comes to God, me, myself, I'm telling God everything about me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have my own principle. If it pleases you, you can take it. I will tell you anything which I'm sure that if, even if you talk about tomorrow, it will never harm me. Are you there? So when you speak out, analyze the statement. Put the demarcation of where the person can reach. Hallelujah. You must have your own boundary. Even if a person is your friend, you must have your own boundary. That we can talk up to this level. I will never reveal anything beyond this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't share everything. Yes, is your friend. You have to know that this is the boundary. They will never cross this. Share all informations that you are sure that they cannot assassinate the character of your spouse. Hallelujah. Let me repeat this one. Share all informations that you are sure that they can't assassinate the character of your spouse. Make sure the person you talk to is a person of good reputation and good conduct. You talk about your husband, you talk about your wife, even if you're talking to your parents. Make sure that you don't assassinate the character. Hallelujah. Just assume if God will reveal everything about you, who can stand here? If God keeps secrets about you, cover your spouse. Hallelujah. We are here by grace and grace alone. If God has shown you mercy and grace, do the same to your spouse. What you say today will haunt you tomorrow. It's by grace and grace alone. May we stand. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that says
Heavenly Father, is by grace and grace alone. Father, I'm praying for the families. I'm praying for the marriages which are just at the end, at the edge. They're about to break up. Father, may you heal them this evening. We want after this program to hear some testimonies of people who will say we were about to be divorced but because of his grace our marriage and our family has been made whole again. Father, we'll praise your name when we hear these testimonies of children who are coming home again. Father, we thank you because you can read the prayer request of our heart and you are going to do more than we pray because you are our Father. In Jesus' name we pray. 